Hi hobby friends. The inexorable chaos onslaught drives on and this week it brings in its wake those princes of perfection unattained, the Emperor's children. But wait, you might say, as you watch me fill in everything but the deepest shadows on this Terminator with some petrol blue from Molotow, you, Mr. GRG Miniatures Guy, said last week that this week we'd be looking at the Red Corsairs, and even that was a delay from what you promised the week before. Well, you're right, and I'm a foul and contemptible thing, a lowly and vile thing worthy only of your opprobrium. Will I attempt to make excuses for myself as we do a primary red pass on these initial highlights? Well, I don't know if I can excuse myself, but allow me to say these two things. One, a commission that has been in back order limbo for very nearly six whole months finally came in, and I think it was only fair to my client that after that wait, I dedicated most of last week and this week to his minis. And two, I really screwed up on the Red Corsair and need to start the whole thing again. Lame, but sometimes that's how the cookie crumbles when you are experimenting. So we are back to meat and potatoes GRG content, some good old underpainting. Our progression here has gone blue to red to white as I try to really push the colour temperature and saturation contrast on this bad boy. In retrospect, I wouldn't be against leaving even more of the red visible, that is to say be a little more sparing with the white, but if you want a more classic power pink look, this much white is good. Our overcoat for this guy will be a deep violet ink. This is a semi-transparent ink, so go really gently and maybe consider cutting it with a little varnish or flow improver to decrease the opacity even more. If you haven't watched any of my videos before, you should go back and check out the underpainting series, which will go some way towards explaining this multicolored pre-shading approach. Like I said, I really want the full contrast punch on this guy, so when the pink was down, I grabbed some Prussian blue ink and laid into those shadows even more. And that's all of our major panel work done and done. I've been doing a lot of trim recently, and I think I can say with some confidence that it takes me around 15 minutes to block in the trim on a Chaos Terminator. Is that a good sort of thing to know? I guess it depends what kind of painting you want to do, but whatever the case, for this Emps kit we are spending those 15 minutes with Elven Gold from Scale 75, a truly dazzling Aurum. Five more minutes on the silver bits using, believe it or not, the purpley Amethyst Alchemy from those Scale 75 sets, which reminds me we need to explore colour relativity at some point too, but man that list of videos I promised to do just keeps on getting longer and longer, so don't hold your breath. And then we can move on to our accent colour. That's going to be turquoise on this guy, which, between the pinky magenta and the yellow gold, gives us a nice balanced CMY scheme, although, to be honest, I don't hold too much truck with those complementary tertiary tetradic ideas, at least not as a colour scheme generator. A few more bitty bits blocked in, and then we can get to shading that gold. A real classic approach this week, doing a wash shade and then highlights. The wash I'm using is the confusingly named Skin Wash from Vallejo, which doesn't really work for skin tones and is an ink, not what hobbyists would normally call a wash, but hey, it's a great colour so no complaints from me. This is thinned with plain old water and then worked into those nooks and the bits I want to be darker. The trim highlights were taken care of with Citrine Alchemy, and I spent a little longer on the skulls this week because, well, I love painting skulls. The plan is to paint that Loyalist helmet black, but I did its pre-shade in the brown gradient I used for the skulls because it was already there on my palette, and it'll help tie them into the rest of the fence decorations too. A quick lick of contrast paint black on that helmet, and some bone on them pesky teeth, and we are making progress. Shall we do some pin lining too? Why not? I don't want big brutish black to barge in on that lovely pink though, so I'm going to gloss varnish him first. With my toy soldier all shiny and sharp looking, I went around with some thinned out lamp black oil paint, and touching my loaded brush into corners and creases, I lined all those borders. 
The gloss varnish here helps keep the oil paint off the raised areas and gives me an easier surface to clean if the paint goes somewhere I don't want it to. Of course, if you used your oils as a wash and wanted some staining, you would want a matte surface to grip onto all that paint. And don't forget, there is no need to varnish before using oil paints anyway. I don't want my final finish to be shiny though, so when the oils were more or less set, I gave him a once over with matte varnish. Funny, tragic thing happened here. I just happened to have watched the Tale of Painters video on matte varnishes earlier that day and heard Starley mention the frosting issue people suffer with matte varnishes. Huh, I thought, that's never happened to me. And so, much like our subjects this week, I was cursed by my hubris and arrogance and the little bugger frosted up something rotten. If that happens to you, you can make some amends by applying a gloss varnish, sometimes, but it's not always a perfect solution. In this case, it helped somewhat, but you will see in the final reveals in just a second that there's still a little unfortunate mistiness here and there. Ho-hum, I did what Fulgrim never could, and I swallowed my pride and got on with the final details, edge highlighting, and all that stuff. Just a quick minute to say a massive thank you to my pure and perfect patrons on Patreon for supporting my paint and verbosity habit. You folk are honestly the best. To get in on the Kittens and Snowscape action, check out the link to Patreon below, or consider a one-time tip with the super like button. And of course, just tickling the thumbs up and leaving a thought below is easy and generous and wonderful too. Let's take a look. Bam! How is that for some fighting future from the fantastical future? I genuinely love the audacity of a pink space marine, especially in Terminator armor. And although it's dipping my toe into the meta conversation around 40k, something I try to skirt usually, I do think pink super soldiers speak to those succulent counterculture roots that still somewhat feed the GW ecosystem. What do you think? Let me know down below, go ahead and subscribe for more madness, and cheers for watching.